up guys, we're at the Rapid 3D, about to walk in again. Let's go. All right. What's up guys, so we're at the Rapid 3D and everybody's closing up shop now. Everybody's packing up, ready to get home. So, uh, just wanted to uh, walk around a little bit. Everybody's packing up. Oh, that's cool. Cool guys. Developer's kit, okay. Hi. Just finishing off the show, man. Just recording the last bit of video, you know. That's a, I didn't even get to see this yet, man. This is uh, badass. Yeah, yeah. I'll look it up online, though. Sure. Cool. Nice. Get a few of those. Oh, the German rip wrap. Oh, dude. Okay. All right. That's cool. Hi. Hey, it's going well. You know, end of show. Watch everybody pack up. <laughs> yeah. Nice. How's your show? It's pretty pretty, good. Very good, very pretty good. good. All right. I think. Where do you uh, see the 3D printing future going? Six months to a year. Well, that thing. That big. blows. Right. <laughs> I pretty much changes things to a large degree. Uh, I see. Are you one of the founders here, or? Well, I'm, I founder? represent Pres this company. I I sell a lot of different machines. Okay. So this is a new one that we're adding to our list of different machines. Nice, nice. How about yourself? What do you do? design, develop products, cool. work on some 3D printing hardware. Um, if you've ever Googled or heard of a shipping container 3D printer, uh, there was an article posted last year. Yeah. Uh, that was that was my uh, my article. Oh, really? Yeah. I'll look it up. Yeah, man. So uh, I'm looking to, you know, meet some people, maybe some manufacturing partners. I would love to see a large format 3D printer in a, in a, in a shipping container, a 20-foot, you know, even if it's half, half the size of it internally. But I think it would be something that can be transportable, you know, build large things, use local like materials. Uh, oh. All right. DMLS or what are y'all doing here? Uh, laser blow process. You create a melt pool with the laser and then blow the powder into that melt pool. Yep. Ah. Uh, a couple of years ago. <laughs> right. But I went FDM route. Got it. Has it been a good show? It was a great show. How about you? Um, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, we finally had Metal. Solid metal. Yep. That thing, this was a 20 hour build. 20 hours. Not bad. The better poster child for the winning project was this one. Oh, the holy grail right there, huh? <laughs> like my gourd. That's, it's $500 pound material. They make it from a solid block. They make this and other geometries. They literally save more than ten thousand dollars by making this this way first. You feel it? Okay. Wow. It's it's. Is that no matter what, what is it? Steel. It's tantalum. It is. I've never even heard of that. It's an element. Go back to your periodic table. Oh, it's a bigger one, huh?
pretty big metal. He, uh, the uh, the metal for the heater oh. it's like, it looks similar size to the volcano. Um, yeah, it's a little bit thicker than. That's the same hot end we use. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. That's like off the shelf hot end. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. All right, what's happening here? Oh. Sorry. That is a big screen. That's a big screen. Touch screen, CNC controller, reverse. Yeah, from your team, I'd be like... Oh. Put back into the building and then bring it right back. Um, and because of our technology, we don't have to have the powder at such a high temperature. Uh, so the parts that the powder that's not being converted into parts that's supported, it's, it's yeah, it's generally pristine, right? Because with SLS, you have to have it such a high temperature, and it's time and temperature that erodes the material. Uh. Which is why they have to have much higher uh, mix of temperatures in three years. We're able to do 80 20 in this case. So what kind of shrinkage happens as parts cool down, not much as it's Do you compensate for that? Yeah. Now the... Uh, yeah. Whoever had to figure that out. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. You bet. I have a question about the mixing. Yeah. Um, so you guys mix the powders in here. You basically pre-mix it, then you throw it in the machine, and it uses that. Yeah. You guys mix the powders in here. You basically pre-mix it, then you throw it in the machine, and it uses that. Right. So it brings parts back, and we bring uh, new mixed powder to the printer. So what happens when you recycle that mixture? Is it now a combination of all types of mixtures, or is it out the part? Mm -hmm. So you can imagine an outside layer that's one color, and an inside layer that is a different color. Okay. And when you see that second color, that's when it's worn, or it's time to change the part. Or like an injection, um, like an injection mold, some people like to print molds out of 3D printing. Fusion 3D. Fusion 3D printer, guys. That's the shit right here. Huge potential of multi jet fusion 3D printing. Thank you very much. They did a lot of best classes. Are these? Aerospace applications, you said, most uh, of it, yeah. most of it, yeah. for the metal 3D printing, right? Yeah. 
that's that's correct. Yeah. What do you see that going in the next? Uh, I don't know, six months to a year. What do you What are you thinking? I mean, it's taken off uh, uh, leaps and bounds. You know, in the past couple of years. Sure. So, uh, I mean, I think it's going to continue expanding and and uh, continue to find additional uses. You know. So, yeah, man. This is this is this is where it's at, right? Metal three D printing. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. mean, you design it, you can have it. You know, yep. same day. Well, yeah. Depending Yeah, I've seen that. 